Once there was a color so valuable that emperors and conquistadors would covet it, as well as kings and cardinals. Artists went wild over it, pirates ransacked ships for it, poets sang its praises, scientists vied with each other to probe its mysteries. Desperate men even risked their lives to obtain it. This highly prized commodity was the secret to the color of desire. A tiny dried insect that produced the perfect red. Carmine red, also sometimes known as cochineal red, is a deep red color that is slightly purplish but also slightly closer to red than the color crimson is. As early as 2000 BC, Mesoamericans discovered that pinching an insect found on prickly pear cacti yielded a blood red stain on fingers and fabric. Before its worldwide discovery, there were only a few natural substances that actually produced a red dye. Most fell short as dyes for textiles and the colors would settle into corals and russet hues instead of a true scarlet. The worst of them faded fast into dull pinkish browns. True reds were rare and the elusive pigment became even more prized. When Hernan Cortez and the conquistadors arrived to colonize the Americas, they uncovered the power of carmine source and built enormous wealth by monopolizing the cochineal market. They discovered the pigment in the great markets of modern-day Mexico City. The exotic source of the dye became a sensation back in Europe, where it was deemed the perfect red. The dye would launch Spain towards its eventual role as an economic superpower and became one of the New World's primary exports, as a red craze descended on Europe. Their monopoly on the color source made it one of their most valuable exports from Mexico, second only to silver. Ounce for ounce, cochineal was the most powerful natural red dye in the world. Europeans largely used cochineal on textiles to produce red fabrics. It could also be used to make shades of peach, pink, purple, and black, but the reds were what made cochineal famous. Court gowns and royal robes were made with cochineal, as were the uniforms of British officers. If a European artist at the time was on a tight budget, they could get cochineal from shreds of dyed cloth, but fresh ground insect yielded much better results. Artists usually combined their cochineal with a binder, creating a pigment known as lake. It's impossible to tell with the naked eye which painters use cochineal to make their reds, but recent advances in chemical analysis has confirmed its presence in numerous masterpieces. When the industrialization arrived in the mid-19th century, the demand for textiles increased dramatically and created a need for more cost-effective dyes. Chemists began to use petroleum and coal tar to formulate synthetic reds, ultimately reducing the need for the cochineal bug. By the late 20th century, artists had abandoned cochineal. Dyers, too, turned to cheaper alternatives. The shift towards synthetics may have pushed carmine into the background, but it didn't totally disappear, and eventually now in modern times it has made a comeback, showing up on ingredients lists for anything from cake pops to lipstick. When reports started linking synthetic reds to cancer and hyperactivity, and as people started taking an interest in natural foods in general, the market for carmine began to rebound. Although some companies such as Starbucks have recently stopped using the dye due to some vegetarian and vegan consumers' objection to the use of the insects. Ultimately, the cochineal bug has certainly left a vivid mark on our culture, feeding our attraction to the beauty and power of red.